Hi guys and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to be doing some creative automation as opposed to just the sort of basic stuff which needs to be done. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to automate the panning on the guitars. So we'll start with the the upper mids which are left and right. So the first thing we need to do is open the panning automation lane. So just go standard panner left and right. So it's currently on 36, which is okay for the verse. But what I'm planning to do is when it comes to chorus, whack these out to the sides. So we want a point in there and a point at the end of the chorus. And we're gonna whack this one right out to the left. So you'll see up here that it will go to jump to 100. Yeah, it's jumped right out to the left. So we'll do the same with the right one. Let's change that to panner. Standard panel left, right, mark in there, mark in there, and then just bring it down there. So obviously this time, this time we're going to the right side. Okay, so those high mid left, high mid right have just jumped out. So obviously I'm going to do this all the way along again for other choruses, but I'm also going to do it on these low mid left and low mid right. Currently on 34 left, as you can see. So let's just do this exactly the same thing. Although it might not go quite so much out on this one as it's a lower frequency band. And also it'll keep it a little bit different. So let's go out to something like, let's go out to 70 on these ones. You never know how it's gonna sound until you actually do it. Okay, let's just have a listen to end of the verse, pre-chorus and chorus. And Listen to how they jump wide. And we're doing this so the chorus jumps out. I really like that effect. I think that sounds great when the, the guitars jump right out. What you can do is for the pre-chorus, you can take it one step further and have that more centered or you could consider monoing, completely monoing the guitars if you wanted to. So have them even more central, so bring them closer to the center line just for the pre-chorus. And we'll do the same here. We just want to see what this does. So we've got 30 width on the verse, then it comes even narrower, more central and then it goes much, much wider. So let's just have a listen. Yeah, I think that's absolutely superb. I think that works really well. I love how those guitars jump out to the sides. You can do the same process on your backing vocals if you wish. I'm not going to do it on this track. I like them where they are. Uh, I think with the guitars moving around, that's enough. I don't want I don't want vocals moving around as well. But it is a common technique, uh, so feel free to use that as well. Obviously, I'm going to go off and do the other choruses as well, but I do that off camera. Another thing you can do on the chorus is just to increase the kick and the snare, the main driving forces behind your track. Let's just have a listen without doing anything first. Yeah, I'm going to give it a go. Oh, just a slightly, not going to do too much here. We'll do the rim as well, just to keep that in line with the snare, of course. And we'll do the kick as well. These are, these are subtle changes. You, want, you know, these are not, it's not just suddenly going to jump up and have a massively loud kick or anything like that. These are real subtle changes now. Let's have a listen. And that generally works well because you've got more things going on in the chorus and therefore you need you know you just need to give them a little bit of extra help so that's it really for creative automation um i will be doing a bit more creative automation in the mastering lesson where we 
automate the um, compression level or the limiting level I should say on the maximizer but I just wanted to show you that these tips here and I'll see you in the next lesson see you later